Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. Guys, we're going with some more air dry clay in today's video. We're gonna have so much fun, messy fun. This is something you can get your friends around to all have a play with, do it with the family, real family friendly kind of crafting. I love it and I'm here for it. Everything is gonna be linked down below. Now I do have the Daz air dry clay. This is my absolute go-to air dry clay. I have linked it in some of the Amazon storefronts. I get mine from a shop here in the UK called The Works and it's gorgeous. It's absolutely lush. I don't have a problem with it cracking or anything like that. What we're making in today's video is ghosts. Oh my gosh, we're making the cutest, most adorable ghosts. Ghosts in 2023, they are such a vibe. They are definitely trending this year. Wherever I go, whether it's TK Maxx or The Range or HomeSense, there are ghost ornaments everywhere. You know that kind of typical bed sheet, that kind of bed sheet with the little eyes? That is what we're going for here. So first up, I'm gonna make a giant ghost. I'm gonna do my best at least to make a giant ghost. Now you will need your rolling pin. I'm actually rolling this out on my glass worktop saver from my kitchen. I usually have it by my kettle when I make a cup of tea, but I've stolen it. I always steal it when I do air dry clay. I'm rolling my clay out as wide as I can, like as big and as wide as I can. I don't want it paper thin because obviously I don't want it to rip, but I do, I'm looking for around about half a centimeter deep. Of course you can go a lot deeper, you can do as much as you want, but the deeper your air dry clay is, the longer it will take to dry. So definitely just bear that in mind. Now to make my big ghosty, I'm gonna use a polystyrene ball and a resin mixing cup. I'm gonna be able to take this cup out once it's fully cured so I can reuse the cup, that's not an issue. The ball, however, will get fully stuck and it does get fully stuck inside. And that's absolutely fine. The ghost itself will just stand up under the weight of its own cured clayness. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Now, I really had no idea what I was doing here. I just knew I wanted to create a form over which I could place my air dry clay and Bob's your uncle, you have a ghost. This is pretty much like placing a white bed sheet over yourself and you're a ghost. I mean, it doesn't get any more fun and any more easy. The tricky part came when it was time to create those fabric folds, those real typical fabric folds that you see on these ghosts. Now, really, I would just say go slowly, play it by eye, see what works for you. You don't need to have as many folds as I have here. Again, the filming angles, <laughs> It was hard to get a filming angle right on this, but I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just using my hand and some water to smooth down the clay so that it falls like a natural cotton sheet. It falls really, really naturally. Some of the folds were created organically when the clay fell. Some of the folds, I really have to bring it in. I have to manipulate the clay bring the clay out, bring the clay back in and just work all the way around until I'm really, really happy with the way the material is, I guess, draping um, the clay. I'm, I'm, until I'm happy with the way the clay looks, I will just continue. I will continue to work my way around using my hands with water on them to smooth the clay out. Again, because I rolled it quite thin this did this did play a little bit of havoc. It would have been easier had I rolled the clay just slightly thicker. It would have given me just a little bit more luxury of workspace, you know, work time and all of that jazz. But as it was, it was quite thin. So at one point I did have to say to myself, that's enough, don't do any more. You are literally gonna go through this clay if you do not stop playing with it. But as it happened, I was really happy with the way the clay had draped over my form. And yeah, apart from a little bit of smoothing over the surface with my hand and some water, I pretty much left it there. Now, again, this is optional. You can have this draping as wide 
as you want. I decided to bring it in a bit and by that I just used my craft blade to go kind of in and around where I felt like a piece of material would naturally drape. Again, how you play this part is entirely up to you. Part of me kind of wishes I left this. I left this alone because I kind of like the way it drapes out and goes flat on the surface. But again, I was kind of like looking at it from all angles and turning it around and thinking, that's okay. That's pretty cool. I really like the way this is looking and I left it there. That is it. Put it to one side, let it dry. Next up, we're going to go even easier. These are so fun. Very similar to, I guess, the Christmas gnomes. We're going to make finger ghosties. Now, it doesn't get any easier than this. And again, this is definitely not fine art. This is just something to have a play with, have fun with, put the music on and get totally lost in creation. We're going to wrap some clay around our fingers. Now, the easiest way for me to do this was just to roll the clay out and cut it with my craft blade into four like pizza slices and then just wrap a slice around my finger. And now once I wrapped it around my finger, it was quite tight on there, like the suction was real. So moving my finger around inside was really needed. You need to do that quite soon on, otherwise your finger will get totally stuck in there. And just rolling it in the palm of my other hand just to loosen it up inside. So basically inside the ghost is a lot of air and you know that's really going to help it cure as well you can of course make these completely solid but that would take honestly a couple of weeks to dry so making them hollow was just the quickest way to have them fully dry within the space of a week and just rolling it around until you're really happy with the shape pressing down with your hand and remember remember to use lots of water to smooth it out as you go now this one here, because I was wrapping it around my finger, we've got this almost naturally head, like a natural head shape. And if you wanted to, you could make these even more spooky, you know, like give them shoulders. Mm. That was not really the aesthetic I was going for. I was going for more of the cutesy cutesy, you know, like the actual bedsheet ghost. That's what I was really going for. So trying to get those ridges out and get them as smooth as possible to bring them back to that bedsheet ghost. It's the only way I can describe it as a bedsheet ghost. I hope you're following me here. Now you can trim them down so you can make them as short as you want or you can keep them to the length that you originally created them in and just using a bit of water again to smooth out the surfaces. At this point I feel like I feel like it's resembling more of a shuttlecock than an actual bedsheet ghost but keep playing with it don't give up keep playing keep smoothing it out with your water and your finger and all will be well in the world remember we're going for handmade with love and just to have fun with this now you can see here i'm using the end of my paintbrush just to create those waves that fabric line to make it look like it is a draped sheet over a ghost and again how you do this is entirely up to you we are not going for fine art i am definitely not a fine artist so if you wanted to make these absolutely splendidly spectacular then I would definitely spend a lot more time creating more folds whereas for me I just used the paintbrush and I just felt like it it kind of gives you what you need to know that it is a fabric drapery kind of aesthetic that we're going for but I did have a play I just kept on going around until I was totally happy then I smoothed it out with some more water before setting it aside to cure with our big ghosty I carried on doing this and I made a set of three finger ghosts each one was a different size and again I'm speeding this up for you guys because again it was a process just making sure that I'm moving my finger at all times inside because otherwise the clay is going to fully stick to my finger and then we're going to lose the total kind of structure of our ghost so just going back over it with water and smoothing it down until you are perfectly happy again I got those ridges at the top like it's because I was molding it around my finger and obviously I have a knuckle <laughs> 
the clay the clay was molding around my knuckle so trying to smooth that out was a bit of faff but totally worth it again i got my scissors to trim it down to size making it just slightly shorter than the ghost i made before before i started working on a teeny tiny little one now again these are so fun you could make a whole entire family whatever your family looks like you could make 10 of these or just one of these and maybe even a little dog oh I should have tried to make a little Georgie but I'm not that skilled I was just having so much fun here guys honestly air dry clay if you're not necessarily into epoxy resin or jesmonite eco pores or anything like that air dry clay I would say is one of the most therapeutic crafts that you could take up um I know a lot of people are struggling right now you know and I know a lot of hugs are needed for a lot of people and if I can give you one thing I will offer you air dry clay because I am telling you when you sit down with it you get totally lost it takes you to the most restful place and it is definitely a craft that I would recommend somebody taking up if you need some therapy like if you need some crafting therapy air dry clay is your friend now this is six days later so these did take around five to six days to fully cure and I am just sanding them this is optional you do not need to do this but I you know they're handmade and I didn't smooth them out as maybe as much as I would have liked to. So I do have a few lumps and bumps in places that we can just easily get off with some sandpaper. And again, I'm using a really light grit. So a really like high grit, like a, you know, you don't want to use your 80 grit on this because that is going to chew up your clay. So the higher the grit, you know, the easier it is just to get those obvious surface lumps off now again this next step is optional because actually this air dry clay is pretty white already you know even when I'm adding white paint not much difference is seen but I just thought that adding white paint would smooth them out even more so we've already sanded and just adding some white paint will make the surface even more smooth than it is and you can see you can see how handmade these are because the lumps and the bumps are real I did exactly the same with the giant ghost before covering that also in paint and again you can't really see the white against the white but I just felt like it was a step I wanted to take each and every one of these got two coats of white acrylic now the paint I'm using is actually gouache gouache um gouache however you say that um it's actually white gouache paint um, which worked perfectly but again you could use white acrylic paint white poster paint any paint you have I would avoid using oils purely because uh, time like they would take too long to dry now to give them little eyes this was the bit I was kind of nervous about I was looking at photo references on google just like do the eyes need to be big like in scale to the body are they big on the head are they near the center near the top are they close together I struggle with this bit here to be honest but I figured I just had to go for it and do my best I am using my sharpie permanent fine point marker but of course you could use anything I couldn't find my sharpie felt tip the you know the the fatter felt tip pens couldn't find them I ended up using my big like I've got a massive black permanent marker I ended up using that on the really big ghost because that that did need much bigger eyes and this poor little sharpie fine point pen was not coping I mean also I was not coping because it was taking way too long but how fun are these I was thinking do I add a mouth do I give them more of a character by adding this gorgeous little cute mouth and a little happy smile or do I leave the mouth off? I decided to add mouths. I didn't like the mouth that I added on the big one so I had to try and paint over it but this is what they are looking like. Honestly, I prefer the little ones. I don't like the way the air dry clay goes in and under the ball on the big one so yeah the little ones they are me they are absolutely me this is what they are looking like on our shelves in our living room which incidentally look like this all year round these are some of the handmade bottles that you've seen on my videos before the air dry clay pumpkin that you've seen on my channel before but this is where they will live and they will live 
all year round. I hope you have loved this and found inspiration in it. And I just hope that, you know, if you need some kind of creative therapy, that air dry clay, you'll look into it because it genuinely takes you to another place and you can truly relax when you're creating. But yeah, I hope you've loved this one. This is definitely one to get all your mates around and just have an air dry clay session because how much fun would that be? And they're all going to be so different and just so much fun. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.